we are now going to do, as you mentioned, the enforcing contract indicator, which is the last indicator in this series of um, training. Um, again, just to mention, um, we will be presenting based uh, on information we have up to May 1st, 2018. So any um, reforms or changes that took place since May 1st, 2018 will not be presented in this um, training. So what does the enforcing contract indicator measure? The contracts is divide the the indicator is divided in total into three equally valued in indices. In general, we measure the time and cost to reserve uh, to resolve a commercial dispute through a local first instance court, and we will go through more details about the case study assumptions in future slides. While doing that, um, we have about 33.3% of the final score on the indicator for the time that it needs to resolve a commercial dispute and 33.3% for the cost needed to um, resolve this commercial dispute. The cost is calculated as a percentage of the claim value. As for the time, it's calculated per days. So here we can see the difference between the resolving insolvency indicator which calculates it through years. The third index is about the quality of judicial processes index, and it's, uh, in, uh, it's divided into four different um, sections. The first, the first one is about court structure and proceedings, the second about case management, the third about court automation, and the last one about alternative dispute resolutions. It's important to note that in the, enforce, uh, in the enforcing contract, we only look at one specialized court. We do not look at what happens in different courts than the one that I'm going to be talking about in a bit for Azerbaijan. We also look for what happens given our case study assumptions only. We also don't take into account due process standards. We don't take into account any appeal processes, so we consider that the commercial dispute is going to be solved in the first instance court. We also uh, don't take into account the procedures for resolving the standardized dispute, and this is important as there was a methodology change um, in doing business 2015 or 16, where we used to calculate what are the procedures that are needed to resolve this commercial dispute. However, following the methodology change, these procedures are not counted anymore towards the score. So what are the case study assumptions for the enforcement contract indicator? We assume that we have a buyer and a seller, and the buyer decided to purchase some goods from the seller. However, upon delivering the goods to the buyer, the latter would say that they're not of adequate quality and refuses to uh, take possession of the goods. We assume at that point that the seller is going to go to court in order to enforce the agreement that was done between the buyer and the seller, at which point the court is going to appoint an expert in order to review the value of the assets. And then the expert is going to say that the goods are of adequate quality and that the buyer should pay the price indeed to the seller. At that point, the seller is going to try to enforce on the movable property of the buyer in order to recover um, the amount from the assets. And we assume that the commercial dispute is valued at either 200% GNI per capita or $5,000, whichever is greater. So how is time measured? The time is divided into three main um, sections. The first one is about the filing and service. So here we take into account what happens from the moment the plaintiff is going to decide to sue until the defendant is served. So here, basically, we take into account if the, if the plaintiff is going to send any notice to the defendant and then maybe wait some time before actually hiring a lawyer 
Then we take into account the time needed to hire a lawyer, for the lawyer to draft the um, initial statement, file it in front of court, and for the court to serve the defendant. And then we move to the second phase, which is the trial and judgment phase. Here we start counting from the moment the defendant is served, and we count everything that is needed to be done in front of the judge, including the appointment of the expert and the expert rendering the decision, and then doing all the necessary hearings, potential adjournments, until the judge renders its decision. And then we also count in this phase the time needed for the appeal to elapse. So here we take into account what the law provides for a time uh, to, to file an appeal. Then, as I said earlier, we will consider that the case has been solved within the first instance court. So we will um, assess what will happen at, at the enforcement pay, uh, phase. So we take into account here what happens from the moment the time to appeal has elapsed until the money has been recovered by the seller. And here we also take into account if um, the assets are going to be sold um, through the enforcement procedures and then how long it would take for the seller to recover the money. The cost measures only the actual fees that must be paid in advance by the plaintiff. So if there is anything that the plaintiff must pay after the case has been solved, we do not take it into account in, in our case study. So for example, if for the enforcement fees, the way you pay for enforcement officer is by giving 5%, um, let's say, of the value of the claim, since this will be paid only after um, selling the assets and after the case is done and not anticipated by the plaintiff, then it will not be taken into account. What is included in the actual fees? First, it's the attorney fees. And they're calculated based on uh, the percentage of the value of the claim. And here, we take into account everything that a local attorney would be paid, including taxes, from the moment the attorney is hired to the enforcement uh, procedures are done. We also calculate what, is, uh, what will be paid for the court fees. Also, the per it will be calculated based on the percentage of the value of the claim. It also normally includes the filing fees, the expert fees, and the fees to issue and register the judgment. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, for the enforcement fees, we will take into account all the fees that must be paid in advance to enforce the judgment through a public sale of the defendant's movable assets. The third section of the enforcing contract indicator has to do with the quality of judicial processes index. As I mentioned earlier, this index is divided into four different sections. The first one talks about the court structure and proceedings index. It has a score of minus five to five. So to explain a little bit what the minus one uh, is about, basically we have, um, we have the first four questions on which you can score points. However, on the evidentiary weight of women's testimony, if we don't have an equal treatment of evidentiary testimony for women and men, then an economy would have their score reduced by one point. So that's why it's minus one to five points. The second section is about case management index. So here we look at the regulations that are needed, uh, that, that exist, and that would regulate time standards for key court events. We also look at whether adjournments are regulated, if there is a specific number, for example, or in what cases adjournments are possible. We also look at the availability of performance measurement uh, mechanisms, if there is a possibility to have a pretrial conference, if there is an electronic case management system that's available for judges, and another one that's available for lawyers. The third section is about court automation index. So here we look at the possibility of filing the initial complaint online, if it's also possible to serve the defendant electronically, 
if it's possible to pay the court fees electronically, and if the judgments are published. And here we look at the judgment of the first instance court and the judgment of the appeal and court of cassation courts. Finally, the last one is about the alternative dispute resolution index. Here we look at whether there is a law that encompasses um, arbitration and we look at um, the uh, framework for voluntary mediation and or conciliation. As I mentioned earlier, there were some methodology changes that took place in the past years. During the Doing Business 2015 report, the value of the claim has been determined to be either 200% of GNI per capita or 5,000 US dollars, whichever is higher. In the Doing Business 2016 report, we removed the procedures, uh, we, we stopped counting basically the procedures that were needed in order to resolve a commercial dispute through the court, and we added and set the quality of judicial processes index that I just mentioned. In Doing Business 2017, we started looking at the um, evidentiary weight of men's and women's testimony that I spoke about earlier. So what are the main findings on this indicator in the Doing Business 2019 report? We have on the slide the top 10 performers with Singapore heading the list, followed by the Republic of Korea, Norway, Kazakhstan, Australia, China, Lithuania, Georgia, United Arab Emirates, and Austria. And we can see for each of those economies how many days they need to resolve this commercial dispute in their court, how much it would cost to resolve this dispute as a percentage of the value of the claim, and what is their score on the judicial process index. If we only are going to look at the quality of judicial process index, we have on the left of the slide the four economies that have the highest score on that index, with Kazakhstan at 16 points, Australia at 15 and a half points, Singapore the same, and China the same. On the right side, we see the lowest score on this quality of judicial processes index, with Iraq that has one and a half points, and both Bahrain and Timor-Leste that have two and a half points. We can also see the time and costs for each of those economies. In this slide, we can see where it is easy and where it is difficult to resolve a commercial dispute in 2017 and 2018. So the first part of the slide is about um, the, the economies that perform the best, and then we end with the economies that don't perform um, very well on the time and cost uh, in the indices. In the past few years, we see that some economies have put in place good practices, and others who have not yet implemented good practices. And in this slide, we see the, we're talking about the quality of judicial processes index. And each of the four uh, sections that I discussed earlier is represented in a different color on this graph. So we can see, for example, in Kazakhstan, who's the top performer, as I mentioned earlier, having the highest score and highest score on each of those uh, sections. And we can see Iraq, for example, who only has a score of one and a half point, and the, the score results from the Alternative Dispute Resolution Index only. In general, it is considered as a good practice to have a court that is specialized in looking at commercial disputes only. It's also recommended to have a court that is dedicated to looking at small claims only. It's also good to have court automation, modern civil procedure rules, case management tools that, um, that would be, for example, the performance measurement reports and pre-trial conferences, and it's good to have a comprehensive alternative dispute resolution framework. What are the results of enforcing contracts in Azerbaijan? In general, Azerbaijan ranks 40 out of 190 countries as of doing business 2019. 
The score of Azerbaijan is 67.51 on this indicator. It takes about 277 days to resolve a commercial dispute through court, and it costs 18.5% of the value of the claim. Azerbaijan has a score of 6.5 out of 18 points on the quality of judicial processes. The court that we look at in Azerbaijan is the Baku Administrative Commercial Court. And the calculation made um, for the value of the claim resulted in having a value of 11,568 manat. If we look uh, more in detail about the time and cost to enforce co contracts in Azerbaijan, we see here the total time is 277 days. For the filing and service phase, it's 27 days. The trial and judgment phase is 160, and it takes 90 days to enforce the judgment. It costs in total, as I mentioned earlier, 18.5% of the value of the claim to resolve this commercial dispute. 16.4% of them are uh, for attorney fees, 1.1% for court fees, and 1% for enforcement fees. We're also at the bottom of the slide. We can see the performance of Azerbaijan on the time and cost um, indices compared to other economies in the region and the median score for Europe and Central Asia. As we see, for example, um, Azerbaijan needs 277 days, which is lower than all the other economies that we can find on this slide. This slide shows us the uh, comparison of Azerbaijan to other economies in the region and to OECD high income economies and to Europe and Central Asia. But here we're only looking at the quality questions that I mentioned earlier. And again, we see for each of those four indices uh, how much each of the countries score on them. And we can have an effective comparison of the legal framework and the quality of the laws that have to do with the commercial disputes on this graph. Uh, 